change, pardon the pun, the whole complexion of America. Am I wrong? No, you're right. The second they want, thing... They want to break down the white Christian male power structure, of which you're a part, and so am I. And they, they, white supremacists may find my next guest offensive. Most people, black and white, participate in white supremacy unknowingly. It is not necessarily their fault because our whole society has been structured around the anti-factual belief in white superiority. Since white supremacy is wrong according to the laws of logic, physics, biology, history, and mathematics, the only way it can possibly be supported is through lies and propaganda. The easiest way to refute white supremacy is to simply embrace the truth about everything. And since white supremacy is untrue, it simply fades away when facing the light of truth. This series of videos will expose the truth as it relates to white supremacy. The topic here is slavery. Studying slavery does not mean you are dwelling on the past. Jews are not told to forget about the Holocaust. Americans are not told to forget about Pearl Harbor. And therefore, blacks should not be told to forget about slavery. There are a variety of white supremacist myths related to slavery. One of the primary myths is that slavery in Africa was somehow similar to slavery in America. The other slave myth is that blacks willingly sold each other into slavery. The reason why these myths are white supremacist is because they are designed to morally purge the white population of its past. These are the myths that will be refuted in this video. We are given to believe that slavery is slavery. In other words, everything called slavery belongs in the same category. That is like saying lions and ant lions and sea lions all belong in the same category. It is important to remember that African serfdom was identical to feudalism, while American chattel slavery was a multi-generational torture camp. There were a number of writers who traveled to Africa during slavery, leaving behind written records. Those who visited the area now known as Ghana saw the Asante tribe. In the 16 and 1700s, the Asante lived in a system identical to feudalism. At the top was the Asante Heen. Below him were the paramount chiefs, then the subordinate chiefs, then the farmers. In this system, slavery or serfdom was that the peasants were required to bring vegetables to the local chiefs. In the area now known as Northern Nigeria, the house estates had a similar system of feudalism in the 11 to 1200s AD. In the area of Lake Chad, the Bornu had a similar system of feudalism in the 1400s. The same was true in any part of Africa where there was so-called slavery. It was actually feudalism, not chattel slavery. Slavery as we know it today did not exist in Africa. In East Africa, there was another form of slave which was a person owned by the very wealthy. They were known as the Abid. Their high price made the market much smaller than the slave market in America. To illustrate the difference between the Abid and the American chattel slave, the Abid lived a life similar to the character Jeffrey from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, while the American chattel slaves lived a life similar to a victim in the Saw movie series. In short, it is misleading and inaccurate to say that blacks were already slaves in Africa. There was only one place in Africa where slaves were economically important. That was in the Songhay Empire's capital city of Gayo in the 1500s. Nowhere else and no when else did African serfdom involve forced agricultural and industrial labor. People who visited Africa were shocked at how humane African serfdom was compared to chattel slavery. For example, in 1704, a Dutch trade commissioner by the name of Bosman went to the Gold Coast and observed that many so-called slaves, quote, have more authority than their masters. As another example, Martin Delaney, who was a black Harvard-trained doctor, explorer, and army major, traveled to West Africa between July 1859 and August 1860, and he wrote, it is simply preposterous to talk about slavery as that term is understood, either being legalized or existing in this part of Africa. 
It is nonsense. The English explorer Rattray visited the Asante of West Africa and wrote, A slave might marry, own property, himself own a slave, swear an oath, be a competent witness, and ultimately become heir to his master. Slaves have the ordinary privileges of an Asante free man. In 1897, M. Kingsley described African slavery as, quote, a state of servitude guarded by rights. Also, African slaves frequently became rulers. For example, the Bambara Kingdom of Upper Nigeria around 1700 was ruled by a series of slave generals. This is just a small fraction of the evidence, and literally all of the evidence is consistent with the fact that there was no similarity between African surfing and American chattel slavery. Another myth is that black people willingly sold each other into slavery. The truth is that Africans became trapped in a gun slave cycle. In 1567, John Hawkins allied himself with several African kings, and he used those alliances to create wars against other African kings. Hawkins, along with 200 of his men and his new African allies, seized an African city. Hawkins came away with 470 captives and sold them into slavery. This trend of Europeans causing wars in Africa became common. Once at war, the Africans became desperate for more and more weapons. The Europeans started purposely giving guns to one side but not the other. This was done to throw off the military balance of the area and to initiate a gun slave cycle. Once they gave guns to one side, they then sold guns to the other side. When they sold guns, they did not take money. They only took humans in exchange for guns. Thus, the only way to get more guns was to sell humans. This trend continued on so long that the British government and East India Company became wealthy from the sale of guns to desperate Africans. By the time chattel slavery reached its peak, Birmingham, England was sending 150,000 guns into Africa annually. Numerous African kings attempted to put an absolute end to slavery, but it was too late. They had already allowed themselves to be tricked by their enemy, and as a result, they watched their civilization get torn to pieces. Black people sold each other into slavery for self-protection, not for profit. We allowed ourselves to be tricked then, and we often allow ourselves to be tricked now. The purpose of reviewing our history is to learn lessons from our history. Whether or not history repeats itself depends on you. The choice is yours. Peace.